Hello and welcome to this video which shows some QGIS techniques that you can use to plot geological symbols representing features such as bedding, joints and lineations. It covers creating a suitable GIS data layer, applying custom symbols, rotating the symbols and positioning labels according to the data. First, create a new QGIS project or open an existing one. Then, under layer, choose create layer new shape file layer. Enter a suitable name and make sure you browse to a folder where you keep your data. Choose point as the geometry type and select your preferred coordinate system. You'll of course need fields in your shape file to store your data. Here is what I'm using. A field called type of type string and in there I will enter the nature of the measurement, uh, whether it's bedding, joint, lineation, for example. I've got a field called strike trend, and that needs to be an integer or whole number field. Uh, dip and plunge, again uh, integer, and dip and plunge azimuth, integer. When you've finished adding your fields, choose OK. Once your shapefile has been created, it should have been added to your project. You can check this by looking at the Layers panel. If you haven't got that open, choose View, Panels, Layers. And here it is in the list of layers, a point shape file called Geological Symbols. On the Digitizing Toolbar, choose Toggle Editing, and then Add Point Feature to enter your data. Click on the map and enter the data as we go. I'll call this bedding and uh, we'll give it a strike of 100, a dip of 15 and if it's got a strike of 100 then it's uh, dip azimuth is 190. Keep going, this time we'll add alineation with a trend of 0, 030, 0, a plunge of 54, and of course a plunge azimuth will be the same as the trend, so 030. Finally we'll add a joint. O10, 7 degrees, and of course a dip azimuth of 100. When you've finished adding your data, toggle editing back off. Now for the symbology. In the layers panel, click to open the layer styling panel or under view choose panels and layer styling. Make sure you've got geological symbols selected. Instead of single symbol, choose categorized choose the type field and click classify. This will look at your data and have one separate symbol for each value in that type field. Click on the first one and instead of simple marker choose SVG marker. Navigate to where you've put your SVG symbols and choose the appropriate symbol. You'll also have to increase the size. I find that 25 points works well for me. We'll also set the rotation here by clicking the icon next to rotation, choosing field and the dip and plunge azimuth field and click apply. Then the back arrow and repeat this for other symbols. The joint, making sure that the size, the units and the rotation are all set. Now you'll see that the map shows there's three different symbols 
uh, a bedding joint and a lineation rotated according to the data we entered earlier. Note that if you don't have your SVG symbols available in this list in this SVG browser in one of these folders, for example mine are in this geology folder, then you could either put your symbols into one of these existing folders that you can see down here, or you can set a path in the settings, in the options, and the system, and set an SVG path up here. The path that you can see here in yellow is listed in the description of this video. And if you don't have any symbols at all, watch my other video about how to create custom SVG images in Inkscape for use in QGIS. And finally, we'll apply labeling. In the layer styling panel, choose labels and change from no labels to single labels. Choose the dip or plunge field. And under placement, choose offset from point. And next to offset XY, choose the data driven override option and edit. And in the expression string builder window, paste in this string. Now this string is in the description of the video. And what it does is it sets an X offset and a Y offset around the center of the point symbol. Uh, both of them are based on the dip or plunge azimuth field. Uh, and they're converting it from degrees to radians and taking the sine or the cosine. The number 2 here, or negative 2, is simply an offset factor to change the distance of the label away from the point. You can increase or decrease this number to suit. And the two string functions with the bracket simply take, makes an x and then a comma and then the y offset. Click OK, set the units to points, and apply. Now you'll see that the label has been positioned uh, with an offset in the direction of the dip azimuth for each of those symbols. I hope this video has been useful. Feel free to leave comments below and subscribe to see my other videos. Thank <laughs> you.